I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. From Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio, it's time to start your financial revolution. Now on Fixing the Money Thing. Jesus said, therefore, I tell you not to worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. So now I tell you, you can go home today. I just solved your problem. Don't worry. Does that work? If I just said, hey, don't worry, is that going to fix it? Not until the problem's solved. I can say not to worry, but until you feed those babies, you're going to worry. And so Jesus says not to worry, but he's not saying not to worry because it's a sin to worry. He's saying it because you don't have to worry anymore. There's a new kingdom. You don't have to worry. He says about what you eat or drink. He says life is more important than food, the body more important than clothes. Most people you know run after the house, the car, the clothes, paying for that, paying for this. Everything they do in the week is just paying for the house, paying for the clothes, paying for the car, right? So who's serving who? They're serving the thing. But Jesus said that you don't, he said, well, that's not life. And you already know that's not life. That's why you're sick on the inside. That's not life, just paying the bills. He said, no, there's more than that. Your purpose is life. Why are you here? God has a purpose for you. He said, by the way, he said, the birds of the air, they don't painfully toil and sweat back in Genesis 3. They don't have worm farms. <laughs> what do birds do? They gather. They gather. They don't store away in barns. So they're not hoarding. They're not afraid of tomorrow's lack of provision. And your heavenly father feeds them. Let's go on. Verse 27. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Can we go on through 28? And why do you worry about clothes? The lilies of the field, they don't what? They don't painfully toil and sweat for their beauty. So you shouldn't either. There's a plan. There's another way of living life in the kingdom. You don't have to. You've got to get out of this mentality of surviving that. Well, I mean, Peter had taxes to pay. Remember the story? He had taxes to pay. He went to Jesus, and what did Jesus tell him to do? Go get a job. Hey, Peter, get a job down in Jerusalem for three months. Catch back up with the team. You'll pay our taxes. What would Peter have to do to do that? He would have to leave his assignment, his created purpose, his spiritual DNA. He would have to run after provision and surviving and leave his entire purpose. How about your purpose? Do you know of anyone who's left their purpose or never, never even found their purpose? Oh, yeah, it's epidemic. So what did he tell Peter to do? To become a tax evader? What did he tell him to do? He said, go catch a fish with a gold coin in its mouth. Now, I know that Peter, as a fisherman, had fished many times and sold them for gold, but I doubt he's ever fished for a fish with gold before. An unusual strategy, strange strategy. So what did Peter do? He gathered. See, Jesus showed him by revelation where to gather so he could stay on assignment. In the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit is in you. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to gather, you can stay on assignment and enjoy your purpose, your destiny. Does that make sense? It's awesome. I think now you'll understand this scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, that says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find the rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke is speaking of two oxen in a yoke. My yoke. Come in under my yoke. Think of Jesus on one side, you're on the other side. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There's a way to live that is of rest. 
not the earth curse system of running, 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 trying to find provision, living in survival mode, living in fear. The kingdom has a way to produce all that you have. Jesus paid the price to restore back to you the seventh day, Hebrews chapter 4, the day of rest, where everything you have need of is provided. All right? That's good news. That's good news. It changed our lives. How did it change our lives? We're going to talk about the, uh, the Sabbath rest. What does it mean, Hebrews chapter 4, the Sabbath rest for New Testament believers? Pastor Brown came to a meeting I was holding. In fact, we held a meeting with several pastors, probably 24, 30 pastors. And we were talking along these lines concerning the earth curse system and how the kingdom of God operates, how Drinz and I got out of debt, how it changed our lives. And uh, so at the end of the meeting, uh, they all left. But Pastor Brown hung back in the parking lot waiting for all the other pastors to leave. He came back up to me at the end of this conference and said, Pastor, I'm about to lose my house. In fact, I lose it if by the end of this week I can't come up with $6,700. I have $100 to my name, and it's right here. And I'm going to sow that just like you taught. I'm going to believe what God said. I'm going to sow that and believe that God's going to provide my $6,700. So we joined hands with him. We prayed for him right there. I saw him about a month later, and he was bouncing off the walls. He comes up, hey, Pastor Gary, how's it going? I got to tell you what happened. Well, I know what happened. The law works. The kingdom operates. He goes, it's amazing. We had this little silk screen machine in our garage. Oh, every once in a while we do a little t-shirt for this youth group or something. He goes, you know, when I got home, I had three phone calls. People wanted silk screen stuff done. We do a few thousand dollars a year. We did $8,700 in one week. I paid my house current. He goes, I just wanted to tell you, it's absolutely amazing. Yes, it is. I was in a conference in North Carolina, another pastor's conference. This pastor from Germany walks up to me and he goes, are you Gary Cassie? I said, yes, sir. He goes, I got to shake your hand. I said, okay, fine. He goes, I got to tell you what happened. He says, my son got a hold of your CDs in Germany. I don't know how, but they got there. I think we're probably on TV over there maybe. And he goes, he heard about how you sowed for the deer and how the kingdom of God operates. And he comes in my office in my study, and he, this guy's a pastor. He's getting ready for Sunday. Dad, I'm going to believe God for a PlayStation 3, or I think at that time it's play, PlayStation 2. I'm going to believe God for one of those. His dad says, what do you mean? His dad hadn't listened to the CDs. His son said, well, this is how it works. This is how the kingdom of God operates and, you know, you know, the running system, the labor and toil system and all that. And his dad says, well, okay, I'll agree with you. So they took a seed out and they sowed that seed. He said, a couple days later, this guy calls him out of the blue and said, hey, uh, can your son spare some time? I'd like to hire him for a day of work down at my shop. And in that one day, he made enough money to pay for his PlayStation 2. He says, that is awesome. About two weeks later, he comes back into his dad's office again. Hey, Dad, I want you to agree with me for something else. Catch this. This is the key. I believe this. Once you have one experience with the kingdom, it changes your life forever. I mean, really, once you experience the first, like, what? How did that happen? How did that, how'd those fish show up? How did that bread? Once you have that one experience, it goes, whoa, everything's possible. He says, Dad, I want you to agree with me for muscles. Dad says, now, son, muscles will take your involvement, you know. He says, I know, Dad, I know, Dad. I want to, I want to agree. Will you agree with me for muscles? Uh, okay, I'll agree with you. So they, they sowed a seed and they agreed for muscles. The next morning, a car pulls into their driveway and a guy knocks on the pastor's door. He goes, hey, we were cleaning our garage out. I don't know. I know I got this old barbell set. I didn't know if your son would like it or not. He said, when I saw that barbell set show up, he says, son, give me those CDs. Right. And so he was at that conference. I was sitting at Smith and Walensky's. I had my faith hunt book. You know, I, I wrote a book about how I learned how faith operates by hunting. I had the book sitting under my chair, and this waiter comes up, and our guest speaker, we're out there talking about the event, the conference we had. And uh, he's talking, and I think it's in the fall, so it's getting close to deer season. I don't know how hunting came up, really, I don't know, but it did. So he goes, man, I never get a deer. And so my guest speaker says, well, you all talk to Gary. He gets deer every time in 45 minutes. He just gets it by faith. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, listen, take my book. I had one copy with me. Take my book and read it. 
So we had this speaker in two or three years in a row, the same week every year. So the next year, the speaker was here, and she said, I love that Smith and Walensky's restaurant. Let's, can we go there again? I said, sure. So we went there again, and they had the same waiter. Amazingly, the same waiter, and he goes, hey, you were the guys that gave me the book last year. He says, i got to tell you what happened. I read the book. I, I sowed my seed. I believed God for the deer. I went out, and I got two deer on opening day. He said, the first time in my entire life. He goes, that was amazing. Absolutely. That's how it works. It's fun to talk about the kingdom. It's fun to see how it operates. <laughs>